Lord Bridgerton, please don't take off my gloves. I'm a lady. Anthony Bridgerton can take off my gloves any day. If you guys have been living under a rock and you haven't seen Bridgerton, Bridgerton is a British show that has a rating of TV, MA, sex and nudity. It's totally hype now to watch anything Cornish. Of course, because I'm making a video about Bridgerton, I'm going to be talking about mature stuff. Don't say I didn't warn you. You can leave anytime. But before you do, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. After watching this amazing season of Bridgerton, season two was so good. So after watching Bridgerton, I got in a fight with my husband because he can never be Anthony Bridgerton. Because he is not from a 19th century illustrious wealthy family. And so I was super depressed. After a little bit of time and space, I was like, He's still a good man. I mean, not good enough compared to Anthony. He's so good. But my husband's still adequate. So then I realized that I was comparing this fantasy with my reality, which will never stack up. And then I realized how it was making me sad. Well, that's kind of silly that I expect reality to be perfect. And standing in front of me is this adequate but amazing guy. It's funny that I'm like burning my husband and calling him adequate. Adequate is a good thing. It, adequate means good enough. After watching Bridgerton and the acting was so good and the chemistry was so good and like I don't know I think I'm totally going through something because I just became a mom and like the transition into parenthood is hard and then I realized like I will never be in the dating realm again and watching Bridgerton and all this like amazing acting and like the chemistry was so hot like and then that fantasy was in my head and I was like oh man like even though my husband's a good father and we don't have any time for each other romantically and my husband has dad bod now which is okay but like you know when you compare it to someone like as steamy as Anthony it's kind of like of course, you get in your head and you're like, I wish I could have this fantasy. And then I realized how impractical it is to feel debilitatingly depressed because your reality doesn't stack up to this fantasy. It's a fantasy. Anyways, I made this video because I can't possibly be the only woman who watches rom-coms and then have these subconscious, unrealistic expectations that the men that should be in our lives, should be perfect, look like entity, super rich, playboy, etc, 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 and then fall in love with you. I can't possibly be the only girl, so I think that this video will be helpful for every one of us fucking women that love rom-coms and expect the world from our husbands, boyfriends, people we're dating. So. Enjoy. Let's roll. I mean, it doesn't have to be Bridgerton. This could go for any rom-com, honestly. There's so many unrealistic expectations in these rom-coms, and I just, I just, we just need to all go back down to earth. So let's, let's all do this together. Number one, rich, famous, handsome man falls in love with poor, sometimes ugly, nobody woman. Okay, why do we watch things that just seem so impossible in real life? Like, be honest, do you know any rich, famous, handsome man that is with a nobody? He could be dating a model, or he could be dating a billionaire, or sometimes he could be dating both. See? See? He would never date you, or don't worry, I'm not saying it like, like you're a terrible person. I'm just saying, like, he wouldn't date me either. I, I'm not saying I'm great either. That's what I'm saying. No one here is great. <laughs> we should all not expect the unexpected. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's so unrealistic. He's a god, so he should be dating a goddess. Duh. <laughs> when we start watching these rom-coms, we start to dream. And I think I am here to squash your dream. <laughs> Get your head out of your ass and realize that you have a adequate, average, yet good enough man around you. Just like you men out there and you're, I mean, this is kind of, I don't know if this is similar, but like men who watch pornos, they're on Instagram and they like just watch a bunch of Instagram models and porn and whatever. And then they think that their wives or their girlfriends should look just as hot as these fuckers on social media or on porn. Okay, they're not. We are average and adequate and good enough. Same with men. It's both, we're both, we're all adequate and average, but good enough. We're good enough. Um. I digress. We want a man that has a lot of requirements for a woman. Tolerable, dutiful, suitable enough hips for childbearing and at least half a brain. 
And that last part is, is not so much a requirement, but a preference, in fact. Because there's something sexy about being able to catch a man that has a thousand requirements, and it makes you feel special. But let's be honest, women. <laughs> a man would be just grateful that you gave him the time of day. Like any man. I can't imagine a man not being grateful that you gave the time of day. I know you want to feel special, but um, men don't think like that. <laughs> okay, cute meat. I'm not going to learn to ride a horse so that one day I could potentially meet a man that also has learned to ride a horse in the morning so that we meet cutely. There's just so many things wrong with cute meets. That's not usually how you meet the person that you will date. Usually you meet them at a party or a club. Nowadays you just meet them online. It's super unromantic and it's super technology based and it's super robotic and it's super swipe right or swipe left. <laughs> Even if you think romantically about Tinder, it's not like he was like, okay, swipe right. If that's rejecting, I'm sorry, I don't know which way is what, so I'm just gonna assume that rejecting is left. I don't know. You tell me in the comments. Um, anyways, rejecting is left and, and I would say that you like someone is right. You think a guy would be like left, 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 reject, 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 reject. Oh, I found the perfect person right. No, they are like any fucker will do. <laughs> Anthony can't make poems for Edwina, but he can make poems on the spot for Miss Sharma. You are the bane of my existence. object of all my desires. If a man can't make poems, he can't make poems. It's not like he all of a sudden can start making poems because he found the muse of his life. If a man can make poems, he will make poems for any bitch so that he can get laid. Like Hobags McGee, Benedict Bridgeton. We women love to turn playboys into devoted husbands. Even I get that way. There's something sexy about a playboy. Like he's so confident, he's so good at it. He could get any girl he wants and if you could get him to be your husband and a devoted husband, then you feel so special. You feel like he chose you. Okay, in reality, if he's a playboy, he's probably gonna still be a playboy. You, you can't change people. And honestly, do you wanna touch a man that potentially has like a thousand STDs? Like he's been in a lot of people. And let's be honest, how likely is it that you're going to turn a playboy into a man that's committed to only effing you? And then, do you wanna spend all of your emotional energy wondering if he's cheating on you, checking his phone, worrying that he's checking out a girl that walks in the door? That's so exhausting. It doesn't sound like the happily ever after they portray in Bridgeton or in any rom-com that has a player in it. I don't know how this happens, but I don't wanna think that my future husband wanted my sister first. I feel like that would be a recipe for a lot of family feuds. It's not realistic for a man for his first time to go down on a woman and make her orgasm. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I've been through plenty of men. Let's just say that that has never happened. In the history of, of the world, you, you need a lot of coaching to get a man to understand what he needs to do down there. And that takes time and effort. Can Anthony also part a river? Like that's how unrealistic it is to me. <laughs> he marries her after he sleeps with her. Do you know a man that will marry you after he slept with you? In the real world, <laughs> If this territory has already been conquered, you don't stay in the conquered territory. You move on to conquer more territories. This is how I think a bad man would think. <laughs> He's not going to sleep with you and then marry you, okay? I think it'd be unrealistic that he even calls you the next day, you know what I mean? Living happily ever after is such bullshit. Once you get married, that's when the hard work begins, you know? It's like, <laughs> you find out you're gonna be married to this man or woman and they have all these problems and that you'll be living with these fucking problems for the rest of your life unless you fucking do something about it and you guys fight about the same shit and then you have kids and you have work that you're unhappy about and then you have to go to marriage counseling to figure out your shit and then you have to do massive therapy, a lot of antidepressants, etc, etc, etc just to be connected to your husband or your wife. There's no such thing as happily ever after. Happily ever after takes fucking work, you know? Like, it takes work to have a happy family. It takes work to have a happy relationship with your husband. It takes ongoing work. It will never end. 
that's the kind of work you will have. <laughs> But it's also love. I mean, that work is love. But like, imagining that there's just an end, a happily ever after, is just impossible. And it's so unrealistic. And I just want to break that down for you. Because I'm breaking it down for me too. So sorry. There's just no such thing as a happily ever after. On that flip side, there's something real that you have. There's something true and like a real connection. You have something imperfect, but you have something amazing. And it's silly to watch these amazing rom-coms without a grain of salt. I think in the end, I, my problem with rom-coms is that they don't really portray that love and commitment and sex. It takes real work. It takes real work. It takes a lot of effort to do all those things. Yes, yes, sex takes effort. <laughs> okay. When you have kids, sex takes planning, it takes time, it takes being creative, it takes being in the mood, like all those things, it takes work, it takes work. I mean, why do you think I bought the gloves? <laughs> it wasn't for you. <laughs> I'll leave it at that because I'm a lady. Okay, I'm not, obviously. <laughs> and no, I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you that you should settle for a man or a boy. I, I'm not telling you that you have to settle. But I'm also saying that you shouldn't expect Mr. Wright to be famous and have a ton of money and can write you poems and brings you a horse, okay? Or be as deliciously ripped as Antony. He is so hot. By the way, Antony in real life, gay. The perfect ones always are, honey. All right, I'm at the end. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it brought you a little bit down to earth. We all need to be more realistic with our expectations and uh, take some gratitude with the people around us because I certainly do. I love you, Ben. Anyways, I hope you guys like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.